Now, earlier in the morning, though, we did get reports that uh, early trials of a vaccine that Pfizer is developing with German company BioNTech uh, is showing some promise. Joining us for more, Sam Pizzelli, Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Pharmaceutical Analyst. Hey, Sam, what, what does promise mean for this uh, vaccine? Yeah, so, um, so the, the, looking at the paper that's come out, um, they have basically shown uh, antibody responses in the participants who were vaccinated. They, they, they took a bunch of people, not many. This is an early, early trial, and they vaccinated them with one of four things that they're trying, and uh, the individuals raised showed an immune response. So that's it. It's promising, but very, very early. Okay, let's just kind of deal with the details here. How strong an antibody response do these vaccines have to produce to be defined as successful? And because I, I keep reading stuff that says it produces an antibody response, and I'm left wondering, Sam, whether that's simply enough or actually whether or not we need a stronger antibody response or we need the right antibody response. There doesn't seem to be that detail. Can you help me? Uh, I wish I could. Um, I don't think anybody can until you prove it in a so-called field trial where you vaccinate thousands of people and look for the percentage of patients who get infected versus uh, those who didn't get the vaccine. But in this case, what you can do is compare the level of antibody in the blood of these individuals with what you've seen in the, in the blood of patients who've recovered from the disease. So in the case of this particular study, which is one of the very few that we've got human study data on, they've shown that it can be one, two, or three-fold higher levels of antibody. But it still doesn't mean that this proves protection. And it also doesn't mean that it's a long-lasting protection. But it certainly well is the first step for man. <laughs> First step for man. There you go. But I think you raise a really good point because just because we get a headline that says it shows promise doesn't mean it's foolproof and a perfect vaccine. And I wonder, like, the more the headlines cross about vaccine optimism, does that take out the structural changes that we as people in society need to implement to move past the virus? Well, sure. I mean, you know, if we get a vaccine that protects us, even if it's one that doesn't necessarily clear our infections, but makes us much less prone to disease, a proper full-blown COVID disease, then, uh, then, of course, we can just move on and get on with our lives. That, that's what we're all waiting for. OK. Do you think, Sam, that that is what is realistically possible? Uh, again, I listened to, to the testimony yesterday from Dr Fauci. I've listened to other testimonies as well. I've listened to what the British Prime Minister says. The expectation seems to be that we are not going to have an effective vaccine until much later on in the winter, kind of at the earliest. And then I'm wondering as well whether these first-round vaccines are going to do what you just said, which is going to allow us to get on with our normal lives. Is that what we're heading for? I, I, what kind of timeline do you think we're looking at and, and when we get these vaccines, are they going to allow us to return to our normal lives? Yes, yeah, so that's a very good question. And interestingly, Guy, we've just, uh, as, as you just rang, we've, been, we've got the UK's Parliamentary Select Committee listening to testimony by the UK Vaccine Task Force run by an amazing lady called Kate Bingham, uh, who is uh, part of Short Adventures, or at least the managing director of Short Adventures. They were being quizzed by various folks on the government side about, about exactly the same thing. Um, and I think the answer seemed to be that with the other vaccines that they're developing, like the one with Imperial College, for example, which is similar to the one that Pfizer is developing, similar to the one that Moderna is developing, similar, not the same, that they are thinking a little bit later on, i.e. into 2021. But the Oxford University and AstraZeneca vaccine um, where Sarah Gilbert was on the call, or was on the podium discussing, they seem to be more optimistic about potentially getting something available by the end of the year. But a lot of that depends on what regulators want from these people. 
if we look at the FDA guidelines yesterday, they seem to be pretty onerous. And to tick all those boxes, you really have to work very well at warp speed to get it done before the end of the year.